In this short lecture, I will give a brief introduction to the theory of quaternion algebras. Let capital F be our base field. And let us choose two invertible elements of F. Using them, we can define the associated quaternion algebra. So quaternion algebras were introduced by Dixon in 1906, so more than 100 years ago, and they are defined as follows. So one considers a four-dimensional vector space where i, j, and k are formal symbols. More concretely, a quaternion is of the form a plus b i plus c, j plus d, k, where a, B, C, and D are elements of the field F. So this, it is a four-dimensional F vector space with bases one, I, J, and K. And on this vector space, one introduces a multiplication as follows. So we have one i j k, one i j k. Multiplication by one is as you expect. So one i j k, i j k. i square is equal to alpha, j square is equal to beta, and k square is equal to minus alpha beta. ij is equal to k. In contrast, ji is equal to minus k. So here you already see the non commutativity of multiplication. ik is equal to alpha j. In contrast, ki is equal to minus alpha j. jk is equal to minus beta i. In contrast, kj is equal to beta i. So using this multiplication table, and distributivity, one can define the multiplication of any two quaternions. So another more compact way to define this quaternion algebra is as follows. One can consider the F algebra generated by A and J. So two generators subject to the following relations. So I square is equal to alpha, J square is equal to beta, and then they anti-commute. So IJ is equal to minus JI. And uh, using this uh, definition, one sees immediately, so that's the first remark, that uh, in the particular case, so let's see here, so in the particular case where the base field is the reals, then when we take minus one, minus one, what we get is actually the Hamilton's quaternions. So quaternion algebras generalize, of course, the Hamilton's construction. Uh, what can we say about them? Well, first of all, they form a four-dimensional, so this is a four-dimensional uh, F algebra. And they have some interesting properties. For example, uh, suppose that one of the, the invertible elements, it's a square. So in that case, then the algebra that we get is actually the matrix algebra, two by two matrices on our base field. So you can see this by sending this generator to the matrix alpha zero, zero minus alpha and sending the generator J to the matrix zero one, beta zero. Okay, another interesting feature is that the, this construction, as you can see here by this definition is completely symmetric on I and J. So if we interchange I and J, we get a similar algebra. So that's the second remark. So the quaternion algebra is isomorphic to beta alpha simply by sending i to j and j to i. And another interesting remark is that suppose that we have two invertible elements of my field. So we can consider the, the quaternion algebra as usual, but then we can also multiply by the squares of elements. 
So we can consider this multiplication by squares. And if you do that, it turns out that you get an isomorphism that sends this generator to the element gamma i and this generator to the element uh, sigma j. So this tells us that the quaternion algebras are in fact well-defined up to squares. They don't change when we, when we multiply by squares. Okay, another feature of quaternion algebras, uh, the same feature that we saw with quaternions, is suppose that we have a quaternion, then we can associate it to it, it's conjugates, which is defined as follows. So it's a, it's minus B is minus C is minus D. So this is the conjugate. And the properties of conjugation are as follows. So the, the conjugation of a sum, it is the sum of the conjugations. The conjugation of a multiplication, it is the multiplication of the conjugate, but by the reverse order. And the conjugate of the conjugate, it's the original quaternion itself. So these properties, which are quite easy to check, lead, a, lead to an isomorphism between the quaternion algebra and its opposite, where the multiplication is defined in the reverse order. So we have an isomorphism like this by sending a quaternion to its conjugate. So all of them, all of these algebras have this feature. So an important fact, is the following, is that all these quaternion algebras, they are central simple algebras. So they provide us a lot of examples of central simple algebras. So what can we actually obtain using quaternion algebras? Well, since the dimension of this algebra is equal to four, what we know by the Wedderburn theorem that we saw on this lecture about central simple algebras, it implies that this quaternion algebra is of two forms. There are two possibilities, or it is two by two matrices on our base field, so somehow the trivial case, or it's in fact a central, but more importantly, it is actually a division F algebra. So there are no other possibilities for it. Okay, so uh, so let's see uh, some examples. So first example, let's suppose that the base field, it's the complex numbers. So here, what can we say about this uh, quaternion algebras? Well, we already know that they are in fact, uh, because we know that there's only a single a central division algebra, which is C, so the only, and this algebra is dimension four, we know that it's necessarily two by two matrices on C. But we can also write this conclusion by doing the following. So we can rewrite this. So any element of C, it's actually a square because I can take its square root and then square it. So I can write it like this. And then if I use this property where one of the elements, it's a square, then I actually get two by two matrices on the field, I, I'm done. So I can also arrive to this conclusion. So over C, all of them give the same result. It's just two by two matrices on C. So nothing interesting here. What happens in the case of the reals? So when the base fields are the reals, so here there are two possibilities. So it's going to be isomorphic. Uh, so one possibility is that uh, in the case where both alpha, uh, one of them, in the case where one of them is actually positive, then it, uh, it is a square. And also doing a similar argument, we arrive to the conclusion that the quaternion algebra, it's two by two matrices over R. It suffices that alpha or beta to be strictly positive. And then in the remaining cases, so when uh, both of them are negative, so in this case, none of them is a square, we can do the following. We can rewrite this as minus one multiplied by the square root of minus alpha square. So now minus alpha is strictly positive. So it adds a square root, we can do this. And again, minus one multiplied by the minus beta and square. So then if we use now this property that the quaternion algebra only depends uh, on alpha beta up to square, we can remove these squares here. 
And by removing these squares, what we get, we get the quaternion algebra minus one, minus one, and that we know that they are the Hamilton's quaternions. So again, two possibilities, or I get this central division algebra of Hamilton, or I get two by two matrices over R. But this is, uh, this uh, one may wonder, uh, why aren't we getting uh, more interesting uh, central division algebras? Well, that depends on the base field that we are working in. So suppose that we are working with base fields which are arithmetically more complicated. So an example where the base field is the rationals. So here, suppose that uh, you have two prime numbers, P and Q, which are both congruent to three mod four. And suppose that, uh, that they are distinct, then it turns out that uh, we, you can look at this quaternion algebras, minus one P and minus one Q. They turn out to be non-isomorphic and moreover, they are both of them central division Q algebras. And since uh, there are infinitely prime numbers which are congruent to three mod four, we get here an infinite family of central division algebras which are pairwise non-isomorphic to each other. Well, there are, so you see that the quaternion algebras provide many, many examples of central division algebras. So if you would like to learn about the possible generalization of quaternion algebras to higher dimensions, stay tuned for the next lecture.